queen consort Camilla. That's what we're going to talk about. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So why wouldn't we talk about Camilla? You know, she's very interesting. Do you know that I think it's her great-grandmother had an affair with the king at the time. So this was always in the cards for her. They've always been in love. It was just a tragedy that she got married while Charles wasn't away, and they never got married to begin with. But then, you know, what they did to Diana, well, there's all of that. And then, and then the kids, her kids being raised by her. So uh, we'll get into that uh, in the reading, and it should be fascinating. Okay, so this will be about Camilla. What an interesting story she has. I mean, so as kids, as teenagers, and I think it maybe even before preteen, she and Charles were buddies. They were friends. They were pals. And uh, that's something pretty special for someone like Charles to have someone his age a friend. So their their history goes back, you know, way way back. Uh, she he had to go to war as being a prince, and uh, she didn't wait for him when he got back. I mean, they had carved their initials into a into a tree. But uh, so she got married and married really well, and uh, he. Got back and tried to play around a bit. Uh, his uh, uncle, um, Mountbatten, as a matter of fact, uh, tried to help him date. And uh, it was always kind of back to familiar Camilla. They had the same interests. So there's all of that. Before we do much more, let's go ahead and have a moment of meditation. So uh, then we uh, carry on from there. She's married. He comes back. He's dating around. Um, and then when it's time to settle down and they get this arranged marriage, and it was an arranged marriage, uh, it was approved by the queen. There were others who weren't approved. And he was, uh, what, in his 30s? Late 20s at least, I think early 30s. And what was she, 19? So, in a virgin. And, um, and he was already had already started back up with uh, Camilla. So, you know, it was just wrong. The whole thing, Diana. But, I mean, it's just how history is. Things work out the way they work out. And they were always going to be that way. And um, I don't know. But it just seems odd now that Camilla got to be with those kids now and gets to be queen. So... And I wonder if Harry can't feel some of that. So let's get, this will be, uh, let's do three cards first of all to just get a read on Camilla. And then we'll do a, at least a full Celtic cross, if not more. Okay, just to see where is Camilla's head at. One, two, three. How would you feel if that were your history? You know, would you think, wow, I'm lucky. I'm lucky to have gotten through that. Or would you feel guilty? Or would it just be? That's what I'm entitled to. First card to get a read on Camilla. So this is a seven of coins. Interesting. Coins are value, worth, and um, you know they're always. Uh, and you're looking at the fruitful har harvest. She's taken in some of that harvest. There's some left on the tree, and it's always making you think: uh, Have I done enough? Is there more I could do? 
you know, did I, did I, did I take care of this the right way? But it's still fruitful. So have I done enough? You know, Diana lost her life and her kids. Camilla has her kids, her old life, Charles's kids, the crown. The middle card for this is the uh, nine of coins. And the nine of coins is typically depicted, and again, value. Again, this woman was always her, it was her birthright to be in this position that she's in, honestly. But the nine of coins is usually someone who's so um, um, uh, covered with uh, opulence that, uh, look at this one like here, that he has this uh, bird of prey as a pet, very expensive kind of a, a hobby to have. And then the last card for Camilla, just to kind of find out where is her headspace, is the seven of wands, and the seven of wands is, is kind of being embattled. You know, these all, wands are issues and plans and uh, things coming at you. And it, that's exactly what's happened here. So you've got this fellow up here who's defending off all of these plans, all of these issues with the one thing that they have that seems to be held in much higher position than any of these other issues that are coming up. I have this and I will beat you with this. And that's her birthright. So it's very interesting to see where's her headspace. It looks like she always felt entitled to have what she wanted. Charles went away, so she got married. I'll get what I want. He comes back. I still want to, you know, you know. And I wonder if she had that queenly idea in the back of her head. At some point, maybe they say mustn't have because uh, it was clear that uh, with what happened to the uncle who abdicated for the American divorcee, that that sort of thing wouldn't be allowed in the church again. So, Church of England, that is, of which Charles is the head. So the uh, full Celtic cross for Camilla. Where are you at, Camilla? Let's see, where are you at with Harry? I want three cards on Camilla and Harry. One, two, three. Camilla and Harry, where are you with that? First card. Okay, this is the five, six, seven, eight of wands, lots of issues coming at the same time. This is a problem for you. This hairy thing <coughs> is just more problems. Next thing we have here, this king of cups. This king of cups is an emotional, cups are emotions, and I think she sees uh, Harry maybe as this endless pit of emotion. Kind of get on with it. The next one up here is this knight of coins, and that's value and the Knights of Fighter. And so what this is all saying to me is that Camilla's headspace regarding Harry right now is that he's another problem to deal with. You know, quit being an emotional king-size pit of, of neediness <coughs> because I've got the value here. I'm the, gonna fight for it and let's get on. She is more stubborn than maybe a lot of people would give her credit for. I mean, she has known how to just hold on. <clears throat> and not saying that she doesn't love Charles. I think she honestly really does. It's a shame that when uh, you're willing to step on anything, do anything to get what you want. Um, let's see what Camilla's um, take on this monarchy situation is queen, king and queen, queen consort. Six cards and then we'll probably do another four. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Queen consort Camilla. What can the cards tell us? Signifier. Okay, queen of swords, truth, justice, rules, law, she feels she has the right to be the queen. Justice. The challenge to it though, with this six of coins, is finding, okay, the value balance, okay? This is uh, finding that right value balance for where she is. And her balance, honestly, right now, is to be the comforter uh, of, of the king. The basis of this right now with this page of coins, the whole basis of this thing, the coins are value, the page is the very least effective member of the royal court, 
okay, can just bring an offer of a message to the court of value in this case, like a little lamb or a little deer. Interesting. So the whole base of this would put her in that page of coin position, but I just find it hard to believe, but perhaps that's the truth. And then the past of this, with this two of wands, short-term plans. So it's always been short-term plans that get you ahead, one step at a time, bit by bit by bit, okay? That's what's been working in the past. In the sky of this reading is this seven of wands, and so that repeats from our earlier draw. We're saying defender against all of these issues in the sky. The best she can hope for is to keep fending all this off. And I think she will. Likely outcome for the first part of this, then, is this new journey. That's what she's on. This is the full card. The full is a new journey, setting off in something new. She has made it to the top. And here we go with some kind of a new life. And I think it's going to be a lot more restrictive than her life already was, than maybe she ever dreamed of. But perhaps it's worth the payoff. Uh, let's do... Four more cards. Queen Camilla Consort. Four more cards. What now? You've done it. What now? The very self of that question. What now, Queen Camilla? Ooh, look at this. The devil card. So the devil's ill intentions. And what now? Maybe you fulfill all those uh, selfish uh uh, things that maybe you've been holding off on for so long. Who knows? But that seems to be the very self of that question, the devil card. In the environment of what? In the environment of this king of wands, again, all of these issues, all of these issues. King of wands, the king is Charles. He's the one with all the issues. So all of your um, devilish deed, if there were to be some, or or uh, luxuriating in the... Uh, 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 glory of being the queen uh, is in the environment of a king with a lot of uh, issues. Okay. Uh, the hopes of the fears, something was crawling up my leg. The hopes of the fears, it felt like. Uh, with this page of cups, so the hopes and the fears is that even though you start out as just a page of, with values, you know, a message of some value, that the hopes would be that you become that page of some hope. Uh, with those cups, with those emotional cups. And then the final outcome for Queen Camilla is going to be this Knight of Wands, is that it's always going to be a fight. Uh, actions, plans, wands are action plans, forward movement, Knight is the defender. And uh, so it's always going to be, uh, you're always going to have to prove yourself until the end. So just to read again quickly, uh, Queen Camilla, what up? And as we start out with, she is the queen of swords. She's gotten what she believes is her truth and her justice, and but is challenged by finding that just perfect balance with the six of coins, underscored by just the, the, she brings the value of a page to the court, actually. But in the past of this, we show that it's these short-term plans, step by step by step. That's what's happened in the past to get her to where she is. And in the sky of this with the seven of wands, it's just defending off all of those issues because right here with this fool, we're on a new journey. This is the beginning of everything you ever wanted. You even said to Diana one time, you have everything that you ever wanted. You got kids, you'll be queen. She said that to Diana. And look, she's off on that new journey. But the very self of that question, well, that brings it to what she said to Diana, doesn't it? Is the devil. You're finally feeling, okay, I've done it. Now I'm going to enjoy it. But it's in the environment of what? A king with lots of issues. And then the hopes, the fears for that is that hopefully you can wrench back a page's value worth of uh, emotion and compassion, uh, perhaps for yourself or to distribute. And uh, the final outcome of the thing is that you will always be defending your, uh, your actions, your plans, always be defending your place. Interesting. You know, as you know, the cards are always right on point. So I hope you agree with what happened today uh, in the drawing. Um, it was an interesting, tragic, and also love story. It's all of that. So let me know what you think. Uh, make a comment below. Tell me what you think about the reading. Let me know what you'd like me to read on, because I'll read on that. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. I'll say so. This is a grand, or Tarot Grand Lux. Tarot Grand Lux, another Cairo Marchetti 
uh, deck. This guy is just a machine putting out these cards, but they come in a great box and uh, they've got a really useful uh, guidebook as far as the divination is concerned. It's easy to read and it's, you know, handheld and, you know, it's just another of uh, Cairo Marchetti's version of uh, tarot cards, which all seem to be pretty cool. Um, they're easy to use and they've got a nice kind of a matte finish that doesn't slide out of your hands too easily. And uh, so I do this so you get a chance to look at the cards and see how they are. Maybe you don't uh, buy a lot of cards or look at a lot of different cards, but if you watch my channel, you do. Haha. <laughs> so there we go. Good way to get to your energy all over the, all over them. And, um, and so I don't know, I think that kind of makes for a better uh, read uh, when everything's all said and done. So here we go, these uh, Tarot Grand Lux. It's some funny thing that I always want to say Grand Lux Tarot, and um, I bet everybody does that. But anyway, we'll use these and get this going. I'm Mark, my journey through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.